don't visit Colombo. We came across a lot of articles online saying avoid this city if you don't have much time. We thought we would check it out for ourselves to see if this city is really worth visiting. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! <laughs> One of the workers at the mosque recommended this place. So it looks like it's a place that specializes in rice and mixture of curries, just like in Nasi Kandar we're used to in Malaysia. And everyone was going for this kind of mixed plate. You've got this hot sauce, you've got the biryani rice. The guy did say it's not spicy, but we got to try it. No spoons here, by the way. It's all hands. We washed our hands before. Bismillah. Ooh, that is spicy, man. A little bit of curry. Mm. Right. Wow. Wow. That's really nice. Don't be by surprise at us. If this is the type of food that we're going to get throughout Sri Lanka, then I am going to be happy. All this, two plates of this, two drinks and a bottle of water cost 1,600 rupees. Now that is really, really, really bargain. That's exactly how we would like it. 10 out of 10. But guys, we're going to have a lovely time finishing this off. Let's eat. Let's eat. We're going to go inside the mosque now and just check it out and see what it's like. I think after Jumma Namaz, it always gets quiet. So I'm hoping it's going to empty out and we get the place somewhat to ourselves. So we're going to check it out? Yeah, it's literally across the road, so why not? Let's go. Uh, this lovely guy just gave the kiriya. I'm telling you, these Sri Lankan people are spoiling him. Every single place that we go to, they either stop, say hi, wave, or give him free treats. He got chocolate yesterday and now he got a banana. <laughs> yeah, look. Eat, you wanna eat? Now. It's sleepy time now. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Thank you. So we're just now in the Red Mosque and that's what everyone in the local area and tourists call it. But there is an actual name for the mosque. It's three Arabic words that are bind together. I'll put the name down below because I can't pronounce it properly. But it was originally built in 1908 by Muslim Indian traders that arrived in Sri Lanka and they wanted a place of worship. You've got two sections to the mosque. You've got the original structure and then you've got the extension which is behind the slightly modern part. And inside the masjid, you you can see the contrasting colors, designs, that's all based on Indo-Saracenic architecture. Indo-Saracenic architecture means in the end, and Islamic culture, British architect, we call hybrid architect because Indian and then British mixed, that's why we call hybrid architect. And then you can see there is a four pillars is there, one, two, three, four, and then this door and in staircases, that's all made by wood since 1908 from original part and this is a roller shutter made by wood since 1908 from original oh, wow the roller shutter wow. mashallah and this is our main worshiping area here only our prayers and the friday sermon jumaa everything held in this area in the earliest time in 90s before 2000 we can accommodate between 1500 or 2000 worshippers now we can accommodate for Jum'ah prayers approximately 15,000 worshippers one special thing you all can ask why all around the mosque only two colors red and white if you cut the pomegranate you can see only two colors yeah. red and white why yeah why, why pomegranate that's because the thing right that fruit the fruit of paradise and the mention in the Quran, the Holy Quran. Ah. In Surah Al Rahman, you can see there's a verse. The Rumans means pomegranate. Ah. Okay, mashallah. 
Mashallah. That does, Hadid. doesn't it? Mashallah. That was so good. That was beautiful. And oh Zakaria is also the having. The meaning a... behind it is just awesome. Honestly, mm. pomegranate, fruit of paradise. Mm. So beautiful. Mashallah. And you can see the minaret of the mosque, the dome of the mosque, the icon of the mosque that's also look like a pomegranate shape from the top. And gate number three, that's specially for the tourists and the visitors. We want to give respect for them and hospitality is very important. That's why we kept separate entrance for them. Wow, so we ended up spending a lot longer in the masjid than we originally anticipated after getting a tour by Maulana Muhammad and reading Asr Namaz. We made our way out. We actually ended up spending about a good two, three hours in there because it was so nice and peaceful. Zakaria is now fast asleep and we are going to have a little walk about and see where our next stop takes us. Are we in Tokyo? Are we in Tokyo? How big is the Bangkok vibes? It does, right? It gives you like proper Southeast Asia, Bangkok, those kind of side streets with loads and loads of stores and streets. It's very, very interesting, but I have to say it is literally a few minutes walk from the masjid and it's just like a really, really busy market. It's been a few hours since we've had some lunch. When I pass a street food vendor selling some guavas, can't give that a miss, especially the green guavas here in Asia. So I'm gonna get a pack here, let's see how much it is. This little bag of cut fruit, 100 rupees. Can't go wrong. So this market has to be probably one of the main markets in the town or near by the mosque because you've got everything here. Walking around for about three, four minutes, you can get a view of the busyness. And Nadia has found a store selling some sunglasses. They're not original, they're definitely going to be fake. But she lost hers earlier, so we're going to see if we can get a pair of sunglasses. Hey, they look good. Uh, I'm not sure. My guy's got the mirror out, that's customer service 100% right there. You got these ones? Hey, they look good as well. The thing about these glasses, guys, you've got the price written on them, which is 1800 This was a kind of the style I was looking for, but without the bar, but he doesn't have it, so we're going to keep on looking. The great thing about this market, you can find yourself some weird and wonderful things. You've just come across a shop that's got these really old school calculators and like wires and scraps. Just crazy. Yeah, he's taking the pen. <laughs> he's taking the pen. <laughs> And that's exactly what I love about this market. You can come down the street, buy yourself a phone cover, a spare plug, replacement light bulbs, and some brooms all in one street. You don't have to run between shop to shop. So I don't know if you can see behind us, but it is absolutely pouring it down. And these lovely gentlemen here invited us into the shop to give us a bit of coverage. So we don't get soaked. We've got this lovely guy getting us convinced to have some tea right now. It does yeah. smell and it does actually look like tea carrot from Malaysia, but Lovely. let's give it a bash. Oh my god. Is it good? That is good. How is it? Good. Mm. Mashallah, this is what you call a lovely cup of tea. I'm glad so we tried it here. Sri Lankan chai. Sri Lankan chai. Thank you. Guys, bye. Hospitality here is absolutely amazing. Right, we're gonna get grab some food, get in the tuk tuk, back to the hotel. Let's go. Thanks, Safras. Bye bye. Okay, bye. thank you. What comes after a stormy night? A nice, lovely, beautiful, sunny morning. And we're making our way to a lovely breakfast spot that was recommended by the guys who gave us refuge from the rain last night. So it's called Raikon Hotel and Bakers and it's run by Muslims and it is halal as confirmed by them. So let's go and get a spot of breakfast. It's arrived here. Raikon Hotel and Bakery. We've been given this big massive bowl of rice at our table. I'm not sure what to do with it. I think you just put in as much as you like on your plate. But they've also given us these little extras here as well. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm gonna guess. Please comment below guys if you know what it is. But we've also been told by some lovely guys just sitting beside us that we should really try out the masala chai. So I think we're gonna give that a go as well. Look at that, that looks delicious. One thing I love so far here, being in Sri Lanka, is the dal. It looks like bitter corn. Oh, bring back some memories, yeah? Yeah. And then you have the beef over here as well. Here we have it. I'm going to go in, mix the dal with the rice. Oh my god. That is spicy, but it's very tasty. 
delicious, just how I expected it to be. As you can tell, it is very hot in here and I'm sweating the law, but I'm gonna go and try the cheese kotu. Bismillah. It's like a creamy pasta bake. Oh no, he didn't. Because it's like milk, cheese, spices. There's a teeny bit of chicken in there as well. I think this is going to be one of our go-to dishes here, you know. Our cheese have arrived. Woo! That is not tasty. That is too wet, bro. <laughs> okay, let's see if the tea is better than what we had last night, the chai. Oh, yeah. That is exactly like last night. I'm quite happy to say that actually. It means that the tea here though, is very consistent across the board. 2,030 rupees for all that food and we ordered a lot. And plus, we've got enough for lunch later on. Absolute bag in buckets. So Port City here in Colombo is under development currently and it's meant to be a tax free zone so an economic area similar to the Dubai free zone and it's promoting international trade between countries here in Sri Lanka but I read also online that a lot of the construction work or actually all of the construction work is now on hold since the fall of the last government it looks a bit quiet doesn't look like there's much construction work going on so let us know in the comments below if you know anything about this because I'll be interested to know. Oh my god guys, I really was not expecting this. I am actually pleasantly surprised with this area. I really was not expecting the ocean here, to be honest. I thought we were making our way to a port city and a bridge. But honestly guys, this has absolutely blown me away. I was not expecting it to be this modern. We've been spending the last few days in more, I would say, a local area of Colombo. We really recently moved Airbnbs and it's like we're in a whole different place. You could just see it's newly developed, lined with coconut trees. It's got this nice, fresh breeze from the sea coming in. And behind me, it looks like there's a massive shopping centre and the Shangri-La Hotel. This is the first time <laughs> in probably four days I'm not hearing any tuk-tuks, horns, crowded area and it's yeah it's very peaceful plus i've seen people in their kind of workout gear probably going for a jog as well oh and it won't be a field of visions vlog if we don't give you a quick travel tip in every single vlog that we do so here's one for you when you come to Sri Lanka make sure you go to the people's bank which is the yellow bank with the black writing to withdraw money from the ATM oh. it's free of charge oh, and it's a good exchange rate you escaped that rain and I have to say torrential rain we actually stumbled across a luxury mall here. As soon as we walked in, you'll be surprised what's here. I saw tag watches, I saw Rolex, Rolex Omega, there's like Diesel Shop, Mango, all your designer brands are here. And it's literally not that far. Pattern Market is probably about 15, 20 minutes maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, are we silly for thinking a city is not gonna have a luxury shopping mall. And that's right, we had the similar reaction when we were walking through the Green Belt in Philippines and when we were walking through the KLCC shopping centre in Malaysia. We were like very, very, very surprised by how modern it was. Wow, to our surprise guys, this Burger King is halal. And it's halal, yeah? Yeah. Nice, oh, lovely. Wow, look at that, that honey bunnies. That looks epic, mate. I'm so excited to try this halal burger. Right, somebody's crying because it's milk time. So let's go and get some milky boos. Milk. Let's go. One thing I've also found in Sri Lanka so far is the grocery shopping and the prices are consistent across whichever shop you go. Whether you go to one of those small shops on the street corners or big supermarkets, the price of milk is exactly the same. And because we have to buy milk about three, four times a day, that's the thing I compare it to. Those small cartons are 120 rupees wherever you go. And even like the price of Coke bottles, that is something that is very, very rare, I have to say. I've not seen that anywhere we've traveled, and especially not in the UK. The price varies whichever type of shop you go to, which is quite surprising here. So, we were gonna tell you at the end of this video if Colombo is worth visiting. 
and the answer is a thousand percent yes and one thing that stuck out to me we have traveled to many different cities around the world and i've got to say the people here are the most friendliest people we have ever met especially for a city because when you travel to the islands in any country the people are very nice but in cities people tend to be very busy they're going about their day they're going to work and they don't really have time for people but here everyone stopped us they've been speaking to us they've been chatting and playing with Zakaria which has been really really nice the food scene here is absolutely insane from your local eateries that are absolutely bagging buckets to your international fast food places which are halal a bit pricey but still good which takes us on to our next point guys make sure you hit that subscribe button because our next video we found the most insane Food Street, Street here in Colombo. And trust me, you've not seen this before and it is going to blow your mind. You know, literally, <laughs> literally. But on that note, guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments below what you think about it. And follow your visions, guys. And we'll see you on the next one. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Zakaria? Yeah.